In the handheld game exercise, I ask you to make a simple electronic game in Tinkercad. I'm going to talk about this and show you my sample solution. So here it is, the exercise page on the course site. Um, and the key is I'm trying to reference like electronic games of the 60s and 70s, which were relatively simple and yet interactive. Um, here is my sample solution. Um, I'll also separately discuss in detail the, the code for this which should give you a lot of ideas about how to program it. But right now, we're going to look at the solution itself. So on the left is a circuit that has um, a piezo speaker for sound, three push buttons for input, and then two hobby servos for output. And it plays rock, scissors, paper, rock, paper, scissors. And so uh, let's just run it and see what happens. So I start the simulation, and we'll see it does the count off. One, two, go. Now, I didn't move, so that, that sound tone represents a game fault where I didn't make a move. And if we look down here in the text window, it's printing out, player did not respond, game fault. And it just keeps playing. The idea is it's like a human player that just tries and tries again. There's no reset switch. It just automatically cycles. So now I'm going to attempt to play this. One, two, rock. Draw. We both did rock. One, two, rock. Okay, so computer wins. Computer had paper. One, two, rock. Computer won again. One, two, rock. I won. And then the last case is if I move too soon, so one, I go ahead and move now. It says player played early, computer wins. And this is where the computer has an advantage. If it detects that I've moved before it's finished the countdown, it goes ahead and makes the winning move against me. And that's as if it had seen me. So this, if you've sort of picked out now, there's these uh, icons here in the middle of the play field that represent the different positions that the two servers point to. And uh, the three buttons have icons to represent the different uh, inputs. And this plays the game. So the key here is that I have chosen to make a game that could be implemented mechanically it doesn't use any unfamiliar parts. It's just using the same you know, switches, resistors, servos, piezo speaker, uh, as we have used in other exercises. And so I encourage you to think also in terms of fairly simple things, like um, some game involving timing that, or a little bit of output, or a physical movement. You are welcome to use any, any components available in Tinkercad. Um, but like I say in the notes, if you use the LCD display that and just to make a text-only game, I'm going to be disapp disappointed. That really defeats the idea of a kinetic system project involving a gameplay that's very tactile. Um, that said, um, game can be interpreted in a fairly loose way. There doesn't need to be scorekeeping or a winner or a loser or even a kind of defined gameplay. Um, alternatively, if you choose to do something more like an arcade game where um, there is some, some number of iterations or levels or lives, and then a distinct end condition, that's also fine too. This is fairly open-ended. I'm looking for some creativity, but mostly um, a chance to practice programming uh, in a real-time way um, that uses a kind of creative impulse of making a game and then tries to creatively work within fairly simple components to uh, construct a game. You only have about five days to do this, so I think it should be kept fairly simple. Um, I'd like the circuit part not to become a bogging down kind of uh, portion um, please choose something reasonable and execute that quickly so you can really spend your time on the coding, which is, I think, the most important part of this. In a separate video, I'm going to talk a lot more detail about the code example, and I think that will give you a lot of ideas for how to program this.